let me go back to um, to the Iris data set. So, so if you remember, there was this um, there was this data set on flowers, um, um, and it um, so basically the data set said, okay, there are like 150 flowers. They're described with the sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. Um, and um, so there are these three different species of iris, right? Um, and um, I don't know, Let, let's say, right? I would like to go to the flower shop and I would like to buy iris, but I would also like to know uh, which species of iris uh, am I buying? And I would, for that, I would need a recipe. Something that uh, says, if something, then aricetosa, else, and something like that, right? Um, so basically, I would need to construct a predictive model because this is, uh, so this task is actually about predictions, right? So about, um, I'm trying to predict um, the, the species of iris. Um, I can, I mean, we were close of doing so. So we had this scatter plot, uh, and in this scatter plot, there was um, uh, there was this particular combination of the petal width and the petal length. Uh, and so, can can anybody tell me? Uh, so if I just have like um, I just have a a piece of paper like this, right? Just to stick it in my pocket, right? What what I would write on this piece of paper? So that you should buy the setosa, which is uh, very distinct from the other two. Or, yeah, but or let's say, take but let's, say measurement. I, let's say they don't have setosa, right? I'm just picking a flower. They say iris, right? But I would like to show up by, by knowing which iris is that. So I need a recipe for all three different species. And um, what do I do? How this How does this algorithm look like? I don't know, let me the maximum it. length and width. Yeah, so maybe I can write if, okay, petal length. Oh, my English. If petal length is less than, let's say, 2.5, and then we would say then uh, setosa. Okay, so that would be sort of like a rule that I'm hinting, right? Um, and then I can, and then I can say else. So so, but if the petal length is bigger than one point five, what do I do next? It still has to be smaller than the smallest virginica if you want to separate the versicolor. The smallest virginica, something like I mean, there's some. The separation would not be great, right? But maybe five would be right. So what you're saying, what you're saying, Tamara, is that uh, so maybe I can put another if here, right? Saying if uh, so, this is under else, right? If uh, if petal length uh, smaller than five, right? Then uh, would be then would be which one? Versicolor, right? Then versicolor. Okay, and then else, right? What do I write here? Else Virginica. So something like this, right? Um, and I can complicate here because maybe there are some, maybe I should use petal width as well, maybe to cut away something here, right? Uh, but basically, so, so this is sort of like, I mean, this I write, this I could write on, on my paper, right? And then go to the flower shop, right? And then I would be, I would be right most of the time, right? Uh, except that, uh, except for some of this here, okay? So I can also, I can also represent this set of rules uh, with, with a tree saying, okay, here, here's everything that I have, right? But then I'm gonna decide on a petal length. Uh, and if the petal length is uh, lower than 2.5, uh, then I say setosa, okay? And if the petal length is higher than or equal to 2.5, let's say, uh, then 
oh, then there's another decision here, right? And then there's another petal length here uh, that says, well, if it's lower than five, then it's versicolor. And if it's higher than five or equal, then it's uh, virginica. Well, that's cool. Um, so I can represent this set of uh, nested uh, if then else statements with a with a tree. Okay. And this tree is not just any tree, it's called also, it has a name actually, because it classifies, right? So so I start reading the tree on the top, right? And then I go lower and lower. And once I finish, uh, once I finish with the leaf, then there's this classification, right? And this has a name uh, and it's called classification tree. Okay, it's also one of the simplest models in uh, in machine learning. Uh, one of the simplest. Uh, um, okay, uh, of course. So to construct it, I would need to find. Uh, so I would need to find um, these interesting features, right? Uh, the most important features in the data set. Here, it was easy because I already. We already found that the petal length and the petal width are those that best separate uh, the groups, right? We, that was what we done yesterday. Uh, and uh, the algorithm that constructs the trees, sorry, uh, does the same, right? It tries to find find the best features, the, the features that best separate uh, these different, uh, different classes from each other. And these features should be used uh, in the top of the trees, right? Um, these are actually the features that are best, that are most correlated with the class. So correlation, not in the classical sense because we have a classes. So there should be other, some other measures of correlation other than, I don't know, Pearson or, or uh, uh, what, what we have, Pearson and uh, other correlations, right? It's other correlations, because these are not numbers. Uh, um, so basically, German. yes, please. You also have Spearman correlation. Yeah, Pearson and Spearman, right? But these correlations are between numerical features, right? I have a numbers here and the numbers there, right? Uh, and uh, here I don't have. Here I have a number. Uh, the feature is numeric, but the class is uh, the class is categorical. And then the, there are other means of finding correlations. Uh, usually they call it uh, a Gini index or information or or information based correlations like entropy or something. But basically the idea is that uh, I would like to construct a tree that has uh, in the leaves, that has these clear leaves, right? That has, uh, um, that where in the leaves there are just instances of one class that is heavily prevailing. This is what I want to do, okay? And then, so of course, so there are two phases of this, right? One. One is that uh, construction of the tree, construction of the tree. So, and then of course is the, is the um, usage of the tree. Well, this usage of the tree is called prediction basically. So prediction. So I need to construct the tree and usually they, in machine learning, they call this, uh, this data set where I construct a tree, they call it uh, a training data set, training data set. Because basically I train my model, right? I, 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 I design my model uh, on the data set that I have, right? And then prediction, right? Uh, which is like, oh, then I go to the flower shop, I take any flower, right? For which I don't know the class, right? Uh, um, but I would like to predict. Uh, so I'm using the model, right, um, to predict. And this all AI, right, it's either, so usually, so, so this machine learning, right, or, or statistical learning is usually split to these uh, two branches. So one of them was clustering. I would like to find the structure in the data. And the other one is prediction. I would like to predict. I would like to use my data to build models to predict something. Like, uh, I don't know, an example would be, 
predict what the weather will be tomorrow or uh, I don't know, predict the spread of COVID or predict how many more days uh, we're going to have under, uh, under these restrictions or predict uh, what is the mortality under in a group of patients about 60 with different kinds of complica complications, right? Or, or things like that, right? Uh, so this is prediction, right? There's also a first stuff that we do, and this is called uh, evaluation. And I'm pushing this too far because I'm going to talk about that tomorrow. Uh, but evaluation means uh, how accurate, how accurate is my model. And it often also means how accurate, how accurate is my modeling technique. Okay, so something that assesses the quality of the model, right? Because here, I don't know, right? So I build my model on a training set and I don't know how, how accurate is it, right? Uh, and the idea here in the evaluation is that you should never estimate uh, your model on a training, the, the accuracy on the model on the training set. So never do this, right? Uh, but always take another data set, which is called, uh, I don't know, uh, validation data set, let's say, validation data. So a separate data set uh, where I'm trying to predict, uh, but validation data set also has, uh, also has uh, the labels, right? So I'm trying to predict, uh, and then I'm estimating how, what's the accuracy of my predictions. All right, that's the schema, right? I, okay, but I have the trees, right? So I, I didn't show you the tree yet, so. Okay, let me go with the trees. So, okay, here my, here's my data. Uh, here I'm actually cheating. The, my data actually right here contains sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width, right? Um, and so how does the tree look like? So first of all, I need a widget that builds, that takes the data and builds the tree. And that of course is a, called the tree widget, right? Uh, and the tree widget has some parameters to set and we don't care. So. Uh, Probably during this course, I'm I'm not going to go into this. So it's like these are not really some important, right? Uh, what is important? I would like to visualize the tree. So there's a tree viewer. Uh, okay. So this one, this one basically builds a model, right? The model is a tree, right? And this one takes the tree and represents it with a with a model, right? And the model looks like this. Um, so this is my model, okay? Um, and it's not far away from what we've done manually. Um, so this one says, right? Uh, oh, if the petal length, right? Bear in mind, this is the algorithm that figured this out, right? It's not me pushing what, what feature I'm gonna use, right? This one says, if the petal length is less than 1.9, then R is setosa, okay? There's a particular reason uh, why 1.9 and one, why not 2.5? Uh, and there was a lot of debate between Yanis uh, uh, Dimscher, who actually wrote uh, the algorithm in orange for that, and myself, right? And uh, the debate was that we should not use, so in the, in the cutoffs, we should not use the values that are not in the data. We should always use the values that are actually present in the data because these are the values that somebody may interpret better, right? So, so, so 1.9 is actually the, the petal length or the far most uh, aricetosa, okay? So this is why it's 1.9. Uh, so there was a lot of debate on that and it's now, now it's like uh, it, it was. So, so 1.9 here, right? But if the petal length is bigger than 1.9, uh, then I have this mixed stuff, right? Oh, I can actually, so I can actually do this. Uh, so this is actually going to show me in which note, right? So, so I start with all the data, right? Aristotosa is here, right? And then if the petal length is bigger than 1.9, uh, what I'm having is this group here, okay? And then I'm cutting, right? Then the algorithm decided that the best uh, feature to cut is petal width. So I'm cutting here horizontally, right? At 1.7, so 1.7 is here. I'm cutting it here, saying that whatever is above 1.7 is Aris Virginica, which is here. So whatever is here is here. And I see that actually uh, 
the algorithm made some mistakes, right? Because some of the green points are here, right? But in general, that's, that's okay, right? Um, and the algorithm says, okay, here I'm gonna stop, right? Because I'm happy. Out of 45, are, out of 46, right? There's only one case of Aris versus color, which is the red one here. I'm gonna stop here, I'm fine. The stopping criteria is actually defined within these parameters and says, there's one here, it says stops when majority reaches 95%, okay? And so the remaining, right, is here on the bottom, but we see that there's some still some green and red, right? And basically here it uses the petal length again and says, okay, if the petal length is slower than 4.9, which is somewhere here. So if you're in this part, right, then your R is versus the color, right? But of course, then we miss some of the points. We miss two points here, right? And then the rest of the branch takes care of about this. So about these two points and the green stuff that's here, right? So this is why the actual tree that, uh, that Orange constructs is slightly more complicated than the one that we draw, right? The one that we draw only contains two internal nodes and this one contains four. Let me show you two other things actually. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually get my data on the, um, so there's the data set widget that I'm gonna use, data sets, yeah. So two more data sets with the trees such that we, so that we get a bit of the feel, right? So maybe uh, I'm gonna use the data on sailing. Um, so there's a very simple data uh, and it's, um, it's not a real data set. It's just uh, something that I made up. Uh, so, so, it was, um, so let's say I have a friend who likes to go to sail and uh, she goes to sail, she dis I mean, she goes to sail during the weekend um, uh, and sometimes she decides that that weekend she, she would go to sale and sometimes she decides that she doesn't go to sale, right? And I would like to make a, a model that predicts whether she's going to go sailing or not um, on, um, on the weekends, right? And uh, let's say uh, I'm doing that on Wednesday. So every Wednesday I'm, I call her, I say, okay, um, uh, did you manage to rent the boat? And she would tell me whether the boat was big or small, the one she rented, okay? Or the one she intends to rent. And then I ask her who else is going, right? And she tells me whether the company that she's going uh, would be that she's gonna go alone, right? Uh, or she's gonna go with somebody, right? Or there's gonna be a bigger crowd, right? Uh, and then I also check the weather, right? So I, I check whether it was gonna be rainy or sunny, right? And, and then this is my data, right? Um, and she went, um, she went, uh, I mean, I record this for 20 different Wednesdays, right? Um, and so I'm trying to build my model and the model of course could be the tree, right? So I'm using the tree. Um, and here's the tree viewer. And so this tells me now, so this is the, the result, right? Um, I didn't tell you whether this tree is accurate or not. So we are not there yet, right? Tomorrow we'll tell you whether, can I really trust the tree, right? But so far I'm rather interested in whether I can gain some intuition about what she's doing, right? And, and here is the intuition, right? So here, first of all, there are, um, there are 20 cases. So, so I recorded 20 cases of, uh, 20 Wednesdays, um, and in 11 cases, she didn't go sail, right? So the, the majority is no sailing, 11 out of 20 is no, right? Uh, maybe I should go with a yes. So, so then I see, well, I don't know why it's red. So yes, okay. So nine, nine out of 20, she went sailing, right? But, but I see here that uh, this proportion of when she goes to sail, right? increases here. So, so if she rents, sorry, if she goes with a bigger, uh, with a big company, five out of six times she would go to sale. Okay. But if the company is small or medium or no, right. She would usually, she would less likely go to sale, especially if there's a rain in prediction. So in the rain, she doesn't go to sale if the company is not big. Okay. And then 
when it's sunny, right, uh, she doesn't go with a big company. She, she only goes sailing when the company is small. So when she goes alone, right? Uh, if it's sunny, right, and the sailboat is small, she only goes to sail with a company is reasonably small. Of course, you can go with a big company with the com when you can go with a small boat when the company is big, right? Because it makes a mess, right? But this tells me something, right? She's a social person, right? She goes sailing whenever she has a lot of people around, okay? Almost independently whether the boat is big or small, right? Uh, and she doesn't go sailing uh, when she doesn't have enough people and when it's raining because she would expect that there would be thunderstorms and there's nobody to help her with the boat, right? So there's this story, right, that's interesting uh, that I can make, right? And in machine learning, these stories are important because we are building models not only to predict something, but also to try to understand what is in the data. So this, this understanding uh, is actually what, uh, what Ida showed you yesterday. So yesterday was about understanding of the clusters, okay? Now I'm talking about understanding of the prediction models. So we'd like to know what is under the hood. We'd like to understand what these models do. Um, first of all, because by understanding, um, we get more comfortable. So we gain trust. Um, and second, because we are curious what is actually happening. So I can analyze, I can analyze my, my data just by looking at the tree. I mean, ideally, right? Okay, let me show you one more data that uh, just before the lunch break, uh, that is this time it's a true data and that is on uh, Titanic, okay? So, so Titanic was this ship, right? That, uh, I don't know, we all know, right? You already know the story, right? You know the story of uh, who survives and who not, right? But here, let's say I have only my data, right? And the data is actually, this is actually the data on Titanic, right? So, so you have a gender and age, right? Here, actually you can get the ages of the passengers and that would be more interesting. So you can get the numbers. Here is just whether it uh, was an adult or a child, right? Uh, and then the status means in which class did the passenger travel? And there were, there were three classes, the first, the second, the third. And if you remember the, the upper deck was the first class and then there were the, the second class and the, the, the lower deck where the engines were and so on were, was the first class, right? So, so the, uh, the poorer you were, the more down you were in the ship, right? And the only way out was actually to go up, right? Uh, okay. And then there's also this indicator who survived. Uh, so, so survived, yes or no, right? Uh, and actually, uh, it's good to look at the data first, right? Perhaps, and then... Uh, well, I'm just going to check the survival, right? So, so only one third of the passengers survived Titanic, right? And actually, I could do a lot here uh, with, uh, with the box plot, but I'm going to skip this part just to see the tree, right? So I'm growing the tree on this data. I'm basically trying to predict. So the prediction is always, uh, I'm trying to predict from independent features, independent variables. I'm trying to predict the dependent one. Uh, and in orange, this is called, so this dependent one is called the class uh, in machine learning as well, right? So here it says that uh, I have uh, I I have four, valu fair, four variables, uh, but there's a, so within the four variables, there's one target variable, which is categorical. So the class here, the class here is yes, no, it's category. Um, and I'm trying to predict this category from status H and sex. Um, okay. And finally, there's a tree, right? And the tree, oh, it's not simple, right? It's kind of um, it's kind of a bigger one. Let me see if I can uh, target class, yes. And I don't know why the edge relative depth, target class, yes. What, what if there's no target class? Okay, that's better uh, because I see two colors. And then I'm gonna limit the I'm gonna limit the size of the tree relative to parent depth, just let's say just three levels, and then I'm happy with that. Um, and then I'm gonna zoom out. Yeah, so some preparation for that, right? Uh, okay, let's see if let's see if we can understand this, right? So basically, it says here uh, 
so the color, first of all, relates to, so I don't like the color red. And so red means you survived and blue means should be different. So maybe I, just for fun, I insert a widget called, uh, I insert a widget called here a color. Uh, just to maybe if for those that survived, I'm going to put it as green. So white, yes, would be green. Uh, and uh, survived no would be red. Okay. So maybe maybe that helps me, right? So here I see that. Uh, so here it's a very simple workflow. So here the color, the tree. And uh, the color widget just sets uh, how these different variables are presented, uh, how these different values are presented with the color. So you can set the color schema for each of the features. Um, so basically, basically this says, well, so this topmost node is actually reddish because more people died at Titanic than survived, right? But then there's this green square that says, oh, if you're a female, right, your chances of survival go from uh, uh, from one third to 73%, right? 73% of the females survived, okay? And if you, so if you travel back to Titanic, you should never be declared as a, as a, as a male, right? Because your chances of survival are very slim, right? There's like just 20% of the males survived, right? Uh, and uh, actually, uh, you better be a child as a male, right? Because half of the half of the male child survived, right? Um, and here it also says, well, if you're if you if you're traveling as a female, right? You better travel as a crew first or second class, and do not go there in a third class, right? Because the male, the females in the third class had only 54% chance of, uh, well, so that I should change the target to yes, right? So so had only 45% chance of survival, right? Whereas the the others have 92%. So, so basically, right? Um, and this goes on, right? Um, to the point of that tree is already long, right? So this, this is the problem with the tree, right? If it's too long, Basically, here it says that uh, uh, all the female child, all the female, all the children that were females in the first or second class survived. Uh, and you better be, well, no, there's almost no difference here. Yeah. So basically, right, uh, this tree says if you traveled on the Titanic, you better be a female and travel in the highest possible class. Okay. And don't travel in the first class. Right, and if you're a male, right, give up the hope, right? <laughs> so, I mean, there's also actually there's some more on this data, right? If you're a male, it turns out that it's uh, better to travel in the first class, and really the first class really they, they were all gone. Uh, okay, so so this is a simple tree. Again, what I'm um, yeah, uh, I need to wrap up now. Um, I don't know if you appreciate that, but uh, we went quite far away, right? I mean, today, right, we, with these techniques. So, so I told you that, uh, let's say, I don't know, I would say data mining, data mining, right, uh, has these two branches, right? Exploration uh, and prediction. Okay, so I'm just trying to see where we are, right? And if for, for exploration, we saw that there are great techniques that uh, can be used for visualization, right? Even the box plot can tell you a lot, right? Especially if you order uh, the features based on some criteria, right? Um, so visualization is really great, right? Um, and then we said uh, clustering, right? Uh, so we met two really important classes of clusters. One, one was Hareka clustering and the other one was K-means. Okay, but even for hierarchical clustering, visualization was of utmost importance. So this idea of the dendrogram, right, uh, was the dendrogram. I mean, if you do hierarchical clustering, then the first thing you look at is a, is a dendrogram. Period. Right. Without a dendrogram, you're blind. Um, um, 
And but k-means k does not have this kind of visualization. So for k-means, it would help, right, if the data would be two-dimensional. And then we actually saw that uh, we can we can turn this data into two dimensions by either projection, where we met PCA, or embedding, where we met MDS and TSNI. And especially in the largest uh, data sets where, uh, where we are looking for the structure in the data, we're looking for the, the, um, the clusters, the TSNI is really a matter of choice. And then we went away from this completely, right? So sorry, right, but we had to because we, are, we also wanted to cover some other techniques, right? And we started with prediction. So exploration is just finding, is there a structure, right? in the data. And prediction is there finding if there's a model uh, where we can predict. Uh, so today and actually tomorrow, we're going to talk about classification. And we do, not, we do not have time, or maybe tomorrow I'm just going to briefly show there's another kind of models that predicts a number, and this is called regression. OK, you can, instead of the classes, instead of the Instead of the classes, you can predict uh, the numbers, and this is called regressions. And there are various kinds of models here. So we met a tree. But tomorrow, we're also going to meet uh, something called a random forest. And then perhaps uh, logistic regression. And then perhaps something called naive by so, so we won't go too deeply, right? But these models are different in a sense of how how can you interpret the model? <clears throat> the tree is very simple to interpret, but we're gonna find out tomorrow it's also very unstable. Um, and then there are things that are very stable um, and they are also interpretable. So, um, and then we're gonna talk a lot, of, not a lot. We're gonna talk sometimes also about evaluation because we would like to know with prediction how well these things behave, right? What, what is their accuracy? Um, Okay, and that's the picture, right? So tomorrow, what I'm covering uh, tomorrow is that um, is this part here, and um, uh, and Ida will cover uh, will show that all of this here, right? From this uh, uh, from this figure here, it's actually applicable uh, to images.